Good morning, everybody. Man, I feel lost. I feel lost because I didn't even vlog yesterday. <laughs> uh, I meant to, but <laughs> everything that I was doing yesterday was just me doing chores and uh, trying to catch up on things. And I kept on telling myself I'm going to stop and, like, you know, vlog a little bit. Nope, never happened. And I didn't realize it until this morning. I did check the trail camera though. I uh, wound up with nothing. I'm about to shoot it. Uh, I grabbed it off the tree and went ahead and was headed out and saw a fresh, not just a scrape, but also a rub too, all right there. So I set up the trail camera again in hopes to capture this buck. <laughs> oh, I am kicking myself in the hind end for what I said the other day and talking about putting hunting aside and just focusing on fishing, fishing for a little bit until the cold weather came, the mosquitoes left and fugitives got caught, which by the way, they yet to be taken in. I'm gonna go ahead today, I, I did a bunch of mowing I knocked out a fence I don't know if you see it right there there was a piece of ugly chain link gate type deal that's been here for like 30 years I cleared that out but I'm gonna go ahead and focus on working on my jugs for a little bit I'm gonna go out later on in hopes to set my limb lines that's the plan uh, but look at this mess I gotta deal with oh yeah yeah, see, okay, so these are my old jugs, and they are tangled up in here. There goes some jugs. I got to start and paint. I'm definitely going to be redoing these uh, with a different tag. Instead of being high visibility, I'm going to go ahead with a different, with, here it is, Ugh. with uh, this color tag. And it's got some spray paint, got the line oh there it is there goes the the mother of all oh gosh what am i getting into all right went ahead and got everything separated all knots undone everything's ready to go for me to go ahead and work on the jugs this is the way i build a jug take it how you want but i start off with the gatorade bottle open up your cap I am going to go with the Coyote Tan. The reason why is because the color of the water in my area is roughly about that color. On the Cumberland River, I really don't have to worry too much about my gear being stolen, but I still camouflage it. With my jugs, I will spray paint the inside and that will allow me to still have a little bit of uh, the reflection on the of the plastic on the outside if I shine my light if I need to find it. Uh, but at the same time, it gives the impression of trash in the water. And I don't see very many anglers like me that take the time to clean up a piece of public land that you're allowed to fish on. You know, taking care of your stuff. And I'm not saying there's not any out there. I'm just saying I don't ever see many doing what I do and taking the time. Every time I set out jugs, every time I set up limb lines, I take it, I take the time and I make it imperative that I clean up after not just myself, but other people as well. All right, uh, once you've sprayed the inside of your jug, now you're ready to go ahead and tag. And I kind of messed up and I said that <laughs> I was gonna switch up from this tag to uh, the darker green duct tape. After realizing the color uh, that I'm going with, which is the average color of the river, I'm just going to go ahead and not worry about the tag on the outside because I can just straight up write my number on the bottle itself. I don't have to worry about the the paint not or the ink not setting on the paint or whatever. That's the reason why I spray the inside of my jugs and I don't spray the outside. It also allows uh, a little bit of reflection when you're trying to find your jugs. Now, for your line, this is a drop line, catfish drop line. It's 118 pound, 230 feet, 
It's like three bucks for a roll. Love this stuff. I swear by this stuff. I, I use it not just for my jugs, I use it for my limb lines, I use it also as well for my turtle lines for both my bank poles and my uh, jugs if I jug for turtles. Very rarely I jug for turtles. Most of the time I just set bank poles for them. But once you get the line, you want to do your what you plan on uh, fishing in. Like me, I fish at an average depth of 18 feet. It can range from a foot on up to 30 feet. So I make all of my jug lines about 30 feet a little above. And basically what I do is I just count my arm span. I'm 5'9", so I count my arm span about six times. And so all that extra line just helps me out if I ever get into a deeper spot. What I like to do is start off with the weight end and then move my way up. My weight, y'all are probably thinking, what in the hell? It's probably three, four pounds, if that, probably a little bit heavier. Concrete Dixie Cups. This is actually the first year that I've done this. I took the Dixie Cup, filled it up with uh, concrete, took the banding wire. Now, I wasn't so analytical on how I explained how I bent the banding wire. Most people take their wire, whatever wire you, you buy. I prefer banding wire. And they just bend it into a U and stick it down in the concrete, which is fine. But then you have the possibility of losing that weight as well. And they're cheap as hell to make, but at the same time, it still costs you money. So you don't want to lose them. So what I did, instead of just bending it in the U, I took the tips of the U and I flared them out again on it, on itself. That way it has something to hold on to with the concrete. Now, I ain't no Eagle Scout, but how I do my knots is just very simple. I, I don't know special knot names or anything. I guess I know, uh, I know a few to get me by and get things done what I need to get done. But how I knot my... Uh, weight side of my line. I basically just go ahead, take the banding wire that's sticking out, which is already about an inch. I grab the tip of that line and I drop it about four inches below that line, uh, that weight. Okay, about four. Hey, that's way more than four inches, but it's okay. It's better to be safe than sorry. Uh, but you want to go at least four inches. Overlap that line and just put a simple knot to where you have a loop in that line. And what this allows you to do, feed it through the banding wire, and then feed it through again, put that weight again through that loop, and you have something so simple and so durable it's not going anywhere, and you can take this line off and use it on something else, or you could take this weight off and use it on something else. So now that we have the weight to the line, we're going to go ahead, take the end of your uh, line, and you want to go down that line about 10 inches. That's my personal preference. You can take it how you want. I guess that's about 10 inches right there. But this allows you to start off a lead. But go ahead, double loop that line. Go up about 8 inches. And that's what this will allow you to do is have a good lead on that line for you to put your hook on it. We're gonna do the same, feed it through, and just make a loop. The reason why I do this, when I started making these jugs, I didn't have enough money for uh, buying hooks for everything. Here in the state of Tennessee, you're allowed 50 jugs, and I think it's 24 or 25 limb lines. I get my limb lines mixed up, I'm pretty sure it's 25. But I normally, in the warmer months, I have my limb lines. Once it gets into deer season, I switch over the jugs. I set my jugs on around the public land that I hunt on off the river, and then I come pick them up later because it's easier for me to just hurry up, drop the jug with the bait on it, go hunt, and come back and retrieve my stuff. All right, so we got the lead. We're going to do the same thing that we did to the weight. We're going to do it with the hook. I told everybody this several times. I like using a 5 aught to 6 aught double action circle hook from uh, Team Catfish. Now, put your hook in a safe spot, grab the end of your line, grab your jug. Now this, 
this is a knot that I do know you are you want to go ahead and do a double half hitch right on this bottom part of that lip right there on the main fatty part on that bottle you want to put it right in between here and what this does is it gives you a little bit more leverage when you put that knot in there and like I've showed you all before <laughs> It's going to take a lot, I mean a lot, to rip that off. Now when it comes to putting it away, you want to try to put about three quarters of that line on that first lip on your Gary jug. Go ahead, bring that line back up to that lip where you tied that knot. Wrap it around that. Try to keep things tight because before you know it, while it's sitting in the back of your boat and you're going down the highway, things are going to break loose and uh, not stick together. But you do want to kind of keep things tight. Now, what I'd like to do is when I gather my gear, I will drop my hook inside the bottle and then put the lid back on it. And allows everything as long as you keep everything tight you don't have to worry about special knickknacks or poking through or anything once I get home I do this with both my limb lines if I bring them home and I do this with my jugs I undo the cap I drop the hook and I allow the hook to dry I'm gonna go ahead and make this one video since I didn't vlog yesterday I've never made a video of me setting my lines I've always made a video of me re like checking my lines never made one of me putting them up so if I could get Chelsea and Bo to have a decent nap wake them up and us take care of what we need to and then go out there before the sun goes down sweet especially since I'm kind of kicking myself in the hind end not being not not I want to say not being able to but not going hunting this morning since we had the 30 degree drop so oh I'll see y'all tomorrow